like, what the f did you do to this shit? Two shots of vodka. So I take a sip of it. You stupid. And then I blacked out. Hi everyone, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay everybody, happy Saturday. I know we are literally on such a good schedule. It's insane. Before we even get into today's story time, I'm gonna put this out there. I don't wanna waste anyone's time, but I wanna put a trigger warning in here. If you guys do not like violence, please do not watch this story time, okay? The whole story time is a little bit violent. There are so many other story times on my channel that you guys can go check out. There also is a small part with self-harm and there will not be a trigger warning in here for that. This is the trigger warning for this video because the whole thing is just a little bit, uh, well fucked up so please if any of that stuff makes you uncomfortable exit the video i'll have a new video next week and i apologize hello everybody um this is future me popping in i did want to put something in here that i forgot on my instagram i'm starting to do like polls for whatever video is going to come out the next week so if you guys voted for this video hello it is here but if you guys want to participate in this make sure to go and follow my instagram at kaylee lees k-a-y-l-i-e-e-l-e-a-s-s -E 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 okay bye all right so for everybody who's still here guys i am so happy right now like my life has been going so good i'm in shock like i'm actually on top of my stuff which is so weird for me because it's like i have anxiety about not having anxiety i'm like why what is going on why is there nothing i'm stressing about right now i don't know but you know what though i'm thankful i prayed for times like this that's um no but seriously i did though so you know what i'm just trying to take it all in and not be stressed about the fact that i'm not stressed but let's get into today's story time. I'm going to bring you guys up close. There we go. Y'all, my skin has been doing so good lately, but I'm like itchy, like right here. And I don't know what to do about it. Cause it feels like one of those things where if I scratch it, I'm gonna get hives. And I'm just not here for that right now. Also, if you guys see some white stuff in my hair, it's my psoriasis acting up. Leave me alone. I know it's there. There's not too much I can do about that autoimmune disease that is not curable and that half of the medications and topical creams out there do not fucking help with. But anyways, for those of you who might be new here, I'm going to do my quick usual little rundown for most of the video. I will be looking in this direction because my mirror's over here and I would like to see what I'm doing. I do tell these story times in a first person point of view, so if you don't like that, then you can leave. There's the door. There's the door, bitch! And these story times are sent in by anonymous people. Okay, so story time about how my boyfriend and my best friend tried to unalive me literally so a little background information i was 16 and in high school whenever this all happened but per usual we are going to start at the beginning so whenever i was younger i developed a severe case of separation anxiety which never actually went away it still lingers in my life today but one of the main reasons why i developed this separation anxiety was due to the fact that my mom worked from 7 30 in the morning to 5 30 in the afternoon and my dad worked from 4 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night literally over 20 hours yeah double homicide and because of this i never got to spend any quality time with them i mean any time that i did spend time with them it wasn't all three of us together and yeah you know we had the weekend but during the weekend i was mainly doing all of my extracurricular activities i want to say you know like do going to dance classes and all that shit. it honestly got to the point where i remember going into school every day crying because i miss my parents so much like in first grade i would bring a picture of my parents to school thinking that it would help me not miss them as much yeah it didn't work if anything it just made it worse because it reminded me that we never spend time together so fast forward to seventh grade i know that this sounds extremely over dramatic but i was surprised that i made it i'm surprised to this day that i made it because 
Have y'all ever been at that point in your life where you really did not think you were gonna make it out of certain situations mentally? Yeah, well, that's how I felt. Y'all remember at the beginning of this video how I told y'all that I was super happy in my life right now? Back last year in December was one of the hardest months that I've ever had to go through. Like, I literally felt like I was not gonna make it through it. I'm happy I did. And if any of y'all are going through that right now, just remember, it does get better. Things tend to get worse before they get better, but there's always light at the end of the tunnel. So keep it pushing. Anyway, so yeah, I was surprised that I made it out of that, but even though I made it out of that, I was still very deep into depression. Actually, it got worse, I'm not gonna lie. Mainly because of the fact that since my parents were gone 24 seven, I would spend a ton of time with my grandma. Like we would do everything together. She was definitely my second mom. Well, very suddenly and unexpectedly, she ended up passing away. And I felt like my world was ending because the one person that I was actually really close with was no longer around. And when you think of someone having depression, you don't necessarily think of a child being very depressed but i just remember at one point i was sitting upstairs in my room alone and i didn't have anything sharp to harm myself with so i took a pencil eraser and i rubbed it against my skin so hard on my wrists and thighs that it actually began to like take skin off and there were just scabs all over at the time i was confused on why i did this but i really just feel like i i I need to feel something because I was so numb. For anybody who's never struggled with self-harm like myself, I've never done it. I've never really had an urge to do it. So I've always wondered the reason behind it, like why people will do it in the first place. And obviously there are a multitude of reasons why people will self-harm. But one of the main reasons that I found, it's more common amongst younger people and the physical pain that they inflict on themselves is usually to distract them from the emotional pain that they are suffering with. Because as you get older, you can start to have more ways to cope, more unhealthy ways like self-medicating and yeah. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because I know that it's hard for people who've never done or dealt with this type of stuff to understand the reasoning behind it. Like personally, I never understood it until I had talked with somebody close to me who had done it. Um, I'm about to go on a full rant, so I apologize in advance. So please remember, if you ever find out that somebody is self-harming, just know that they are more likely struggling with something deeper than what you can see on the outside. And this is just another reason why we all need to be there for each other. And I don't mean in a way of posting some bullshit quote on your story like, be kind to others. No, I mean taking that shit and applying it into real life. Like if you see somebody who you think is struggling, you don't have to get in there and try to fix all their fucking problems because at the end of the day, if they want to get better, they have to do it for themselves. But for any younger people, especially who are watching this video, if you see a kid getting bullied in school, please do not join in. No matter how much you want to fit in, it's not worth it. And trust me, I know it's hard because, you know, you don't want to be the one that's looked at as different, blah, blah, blah. But you need to sit there and remember that that kid that's being bullied could one day be your younger sister, your younger brother. It could even be you. People will literally turn their backs like that, especially when you're younger. Also, you never know if school is that kid's escape from home. Like I remember whenever I was younger, one of my, like school was my escape from the toxicity at home. Like I was so happy when I got to go to school. And if people don't like that you won't sit there and make fun of somebody with them, that is energy you do not want nor need in your life. For example, every single one of my friends, every single one knows that I will not talk down or rude about anybody. I will never speak on somebody's looks, uh, their home life, their social status, whether they're rich or poor, I, I do not care. And I said this before, I also, I won't do that because it's fucked up, but I also won't do it because I believe what you put into the world, you get back. Like seriously though, like it's gotten to the point where when I get on the phone with my sister and somebody's done me wrong, she knows that I won't say anything. So she's like, I know you're not gonna say something about them, but I will, and then she'll go off. That was a whole ass rant, but if I could say it a million and 10 times, I would. So next time you see somebody who looks like they're having a bad day, tell them you like their outfit or their hair or that they should smile more or that you like their glasses, they look good with glasses or even just smile at them. Even if they're giving you a resting bitch face. You don't know, they might wear that face to protect themselves because everybody's fucking mean to them. We don't know. Moral of that rant, 
be a good fucking person try to make somebody else's day because you never know what they're going through so like i said i don't know why the hell i did it but finally my dad got in a job as a school teacher at a private school so he was home a lot more thank goodness and my mom had gotten a promotion so she was able to start picking her own hours which i was extremely happy about as well and we all started spending a lot more time with each other and my mom did notice that something was off about me but I didn't want to worry her because she already had so much going on and so much on her plate that I didn't want to add on to that. I was more of the person who wouldn't let anybody see me cry. Like going as far as to go to the bathroom, lock the door, turn the shower on and fucking cry. Nobody was going to know that I was depressed. Uh uh uh. Nope. But fast forward to Christmas time, I meet this girl who we're going to call Taylor and her and I became super good friends. Really fast, actually. She was super chill, super funny. I thought that I found my best friend. Also, I didn't have any other friends at the time. So she was the one who I would mainly spend all of my time with. And I feel like because of like my depression and anxiety, I, de I attracted certain type of people with the same issues if not worse but even though her and i became friends i was still extremely numb inside but her and i would facetime 24 7 we would go to school in matching outfits we would do matching hairstyles for volleyball and eventually more people had started wanting to be our friends so her and i kind of made like this little friend group which was nice until the one day i get a call from one of the girls in our friend group and she's bawling her eyes out mascara all running down her face like she could barely talk it was bad finally though she's able to form a fucking sentence and when i asked her what's wrong she told me that her and taylor's dad were at the bar together drinking of course and they had gotten into a really bad fight supposedly taylor's dad had started the fight and he tried to punch lisa's dad in the face obviously lisa's dad didn't feel comfortable so he pulled out a knife and pretty much told him back the fuck up bitch <laughs> you know i had to double it <laughs> like he didn't try to stab him it was obviously just like a scare tactic but while lisa's on the phone crying to me then i get a text from taylor saying don't believe anything that lisa says she's a liar her dad started the fight why the fuck you lying and to be honest now that i'm older i obviously believe lisa and y'all will understand why by the end of this story time so fast forward to the next day after school, Taylor and I were both on FaceTime and she told me that her and Lisa got into it in English class. Apparently Lisa was so mad that she called Taylor a $5 whore for quote, no reason, which I knew wasn't true because Lisa was a really sweet girl. If anything, I think that Taylor said that to Lisa. Well, the next day at school, Lisa wasn't there. And then I found out that she's not coming back to school. So I was super upset about this because I actually really liked her. She was such a sweet girl and a really, really good friend to me. So fast forward a week later, we get a new boy in school. His name was Garrett and he was literally fine as fuck. He had an amazing smile, his sense of humor and personality were top motherfucking tier. Yeah, I pretty much fell in love with him right away. And I wish I was being over dramatic, but that's more of an understatement. So like I said, I caught feelings for him right away, but I had to soon shove those feelings up my fucking because I get a call from my best friend Taylor later that day and she starts going on about how Garrett's so hot blah 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 and y'all know the rules just kidding maybe you don't because Taylor made them up her fucking self now the girl code that we had to follow was if we see a guy in school that we like or we think is attractive and we say his name first we get dibs on him until that person loses feelings or breaks up with that person so yeah i completely just fucking shoved those feelings you know where and forgot about them until my freshman year in high school so about a week after high school started garrett and taylor broke up and i was about to turn 15 so i was throwing myself a birthday party and almost all of my class was going so you know i was super excited really looking forward to this and then a few days before my party taylor calls me and she's like um i'm not gonna lie i think you should cancel your party and i'm like what the fuck why and she's like oh because garrett's gonna be there and i don't want any other girls up on him blah 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 be fucking for real like girl listen i know we're best friends but if you really cared about me you would not be asking 
me to do that for you especially because i had saved up so much money for this party i had saved up for the decorations i saved up for alcohol because i wasn't too big on drinking but i know that a lot of my other friends like to drink when they go to parties so it was more for them but yeah i was like no i'm not gonna do that and she got pissed off at me it's like how are you gonna be pissed off when you ask somebody to cancel their fucking birthday party because you're ex because of your ex-boyfriend make it make sense you fucking weirdo but i didn't really care if she was mad at me because i made a lot of new friends that i've actually became super close with one of them being garrett yeah and him and I had actually been talking for a while now. And I was not about to tell Taylor because I did not want to deal with that bullshit. I'm not going to lie. And before y'all even start the, oh my gosh, you're getting with your best friend's boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend, like blah, 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 girl code. Um, listen here, I followed girl code. Okay, okay. They weren't together anymore. So it is what it is. Mm-hmm. So fast forward to the day of my party. I decided that I wanted to get my makeup done. And I'm so happy that I did because it literally looked fucking amazing. Well, then Taylor comes to my house to finish getting ready. And then she looks at me when she gets there. She looks me up and down. And she's like, I knew there was something weird about you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she was like, oh, well, when you didn't answer my text for three hours, I knew that something was up and your face looks cakey as fuck. And listen, y'all, I knew that I looked good. Like, I knew it. And I knew that she was just fucking jealous. So I was like, oh, jealous much? And she just rolls her fucking eyes and walks away. Like, yeah. Like, I'm not the one who's gonna be like, oh my God, let me take it all off because my best friend told me. No, you, you're a hater. Goodbye. Like, the thing about Taylor was that she didn't want anybody to think that I looked better than her or just good in general. Like, she didn't want me to have any guy's attention. None of that. Yeah, that was my best friend. Anyway, so after that whole little thing, her and I finished getting ready in my room, you know, doing each other's hair and all that shit. By the way, uh, if you guys are wondering where my parents were, my aunt who lives like four hours away was really sick and she couldn't move around, couldn't really do any housework or anything like that for herself. So they went to go and help her with whatever she needed. So I had the whole house to myself. So fast forward, people start showing up and I decide not to drink that night because like I said I wasn't that big of a drinker and eventually everyone is either swimming in the pool or inside doing some dumb shit that they should not be doing and the only other person who didn't drink that night was Garrett because he was getting picked up in the morning by his sister he had like track practice I don't fucking know all I know is that he was at my party and him and I were vibing so hard because literally we would only facetime and text so you know it's good when you're in person and like you still have that same connection that you guys do over the phone. Because you know sometimes it can be a little bit awkward. But talking to him in person unleashed those feelings that I had for him. Like it only took that one fucking conversation, I'm not gonna lie. So fast forward, Garrett and I, we start dating and everything was great. I thought this man was gonna be my future husband. Like I was convinced. Like I definitely thought that him and I were meant to be together. You know, like twin flame, soulmate type shit. And the fact that I got along super well with his parents because his dad was a coach for a basketball team and I played basketball. Like I said, I just thought everything was perfect. Um, I never met his sister though, which was kind of weird because I would go over his house all the time and I would never see her. Like I wouldn't even catch her walking out the house or anything. Well, then some weird shit started happening. Garrett had started to get super depressed and the one day I'm at his house and I hear his dad and mom talking in the kitchen and all I hear his dad say is if he doesn't cut it with this bullshit he's going to a fucking mental hospital I swear. So I'm a little bit freaked out because I didn't think that anything that crazy was going on with him like I knew that he was you know not doing well but I didn't think it was that bad. So obviously I go and I tell him like hey like are you okay you know I heard your parents talking blah 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 and he's like oh no i'm fine they're just overreacting about a ton of shit so you know i brush it off and then fast forward to 10th grade garrett and i have been dating for a little bit now and i finally got my license but i started to get annoyed because it felt like the only thing that garrett and taylor wanted from me was rides places like i was feeling super used especially by taylor because taylor and i had kind of like drifted apart from each other a little bit and now 
she was super fake always wanting rides from me always acting like her and i were cool you know i don't know and if you guys are wondering how taylor felt about garrett and i's relationship she wasn't thrilled about it and I have a feeling that's the reason why her and I started drifting apart from each other. But surprisingly, she had really matured within this past year and she got over it or what she wanted me to believe. But during this time, I was not doing well mentally. So I had actually taken off a week of school because it was that bad. Most likely had to do with some lingering issues from my fucking childhood, always been depressed. But because of this, Taylor's brother was taking her to school and picking her up. And that same week, Garrett had gotten his license. Now here's where things got really weird. Garrett and I, we had each other's locations on Life360, but the one day he turns his off. And on that same day, Taylor turned hers off. And then I didn't get one message from either of them that whole week that I was home. So I'm like, all right, what the fuck is going on here? What, what the fuck are y'all doing behind my back? You hide it forever, Ricky. When I catch you, Ricky, Ricky, when I catch you, Ricky. Y'all, this is giving flashbacks to that story a few weeks ago. Like, I can't believe that people actually be doing this shit. Weird as fuck. Fast forward the next week, I pick Taylor up. We're on our way to school and she's being extremely nice to me because she said that she, quote, understood what I was going through and she'll always be here for me. Tell me when you want to be honest. <laughs> and Garrett still is being very cold and distant. He's not responding to any of my messages. And when we were in school, he would just walk right past me, not even acknowledge me. Like, do you know that one like um, episode in Euphoria where Cassie's walking and trying to get Nate's attention and Nate's just like, who the fuck are you? I don't know you. Yeah, that it, it was like that scene right there. Broke my heart a little bit, not gonna lie, that really did hurt me. So yeah, um, now my mental health is getting worse than it was. Like I should have saved that week off for whenever the, all this shit was gonna happen because now I really did not wanna be at school. So I also had a feeling that him and Taylor were up to something of course, but I barely had the energy to go to school. So I definitely was not about to sit there and play detective with them. So this goes on for literally three fucking weeks, three whole weeks. And then I get added into a group chat with Taylor and Garrett. And they were like, oh yeah, all three of us should hang out. Also, we have some things that we need to discuss. And I'm super uncomfortable, so I told them no the fuck but then they kept begging me and i was like all right fine we can all hang out also i'm not gonna lie i was low-key looking forward to hopefully getting some closure between garrett and i because i still don't know what the fuck happened so a few days later they come to my house and they bring some donuts and coffee from the donut shop near my house and of course they had came in the same car so now i am mentally preparing myself for them to be like oh we're back together blah 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 blah, blah. like you know we're sorry do, do, do. but then taylor just hands me the coffee and she's like oh yeah the donut shop now has coffee and i'm like okay like it was weird because like that donut shop has been near my house forever and they've only ever had milk and juice so like i said though at first i didn't really think anything of it you know but i also didn't drink the coffee right away because i didn't want to and then when she realized i wasn't drinking it she started becoming super persistent and super pushy about me drinking this fucking coffee like she kept saying over and over and over again drink the coffee drink the coffee why aren't you drinking your coffee you should really drink your coffee your coffee's gonna get cold so i'm staring at her giving her the what the fuck is wrong with you face and this is whenever i'm getting fucking weirded out because it's like bitch let me drink the fucking coffee when i want to then she's like seriously i want you to taste it so that way you can guess the flavor because they have a ton of new flavors there and they actually taste like what they're supposed to be like what the fuck did you do to this shit two shots of vodka so i take a sip of it you stupid dumbass bitch it tasted like fucking shit there was no fucking flavor actually and then she was like no you have to drink more you have to get the full flavor so i take another sip and while i'm like taking a sip i'm looking at her and i realize that garrett like nudges her kind of like in a way where it's like you're making it obvious that we're trying to do some shit fucking stop 
Oh, hell no. Also, Garrett just seemed super uneasy the whole time. He really didn't even say a word whenever they got to my place. Next thing I know, I feel super dizzy and then I blacked out. The last thing that I remember hearing in all honesty is Garrett just being like, stop, stop, Taylor, stop, don't fucking do that. Stop what? I have no fucking clue. But what felt like a second later, I woke up. It's been 84 years. It had actually been like two, two and a half hours later. But y'all, I realized I am in the back of a fucking car that is moving extremely fast, covered by a black sheet. So I peek out from under the sheet and I notice that there's blood pouring out of my left arm. Literally, like pouring. And Garrett is bawling his eyes out while Taylor's just sitting in the passenger side, just, you know, staring forward, like no emotion on her face whatsoever. And while I'm laying there, playing dead, I'm looking at the gun that's on the center console and I was gonna reach for it. But then Taylor fucking like snaps her neck backwards. You know, in those creepy ass movies, you know, scary movies where all of a sudden that person's like neck will snap back. That, that's what it was like. She was like, and she stared at me for like two fucking minutes straight. And I'm like, don't breathe, don't make a noise, don't move, do not do anything. Like she's probably trying to make sure that I was fucking dead, psycho bitch. So I sit still for like 30 to 45 minutes, you know, I'm finally starting to feel the pain of, you know, whatever the fuck they did to me. And then finally I grew some balls and I ripped that gun off the center console. Oh my God. And I pointed at Taylor. I like, I sit up and I'm like, what you gonna do now, bitch? Bruh. So then Garrett slams on the fucking brakes. He pulls over and then he pulls out a gun and he points it at me. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Y'all know that one meme where the Spider-Mans are all pointing at each other? It was literally like that. So he holds it to my head and he's like, if you shoot her, I'll shoot you. So yeah, now all three of us are just staring at each other. He has one in my head, I have one to her head. And he was like crying and shaking while he's doing this. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I hurry up, shoot him in the leg, and then book it out the car. Oh! I was gone. There was no catching me. And literally while I'm running, I can hear this motherfucker screaming like a little girl. <laughs> Don't put yourself in situations that you can't handle, babe. No, 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 no. And you just shouldn't do that. Mm -mm. Finally, I run to some random ass fucking restaurant on the side of the road. And I run inside and I'm asking people to use their phone. And everybody's just staring at me like a deer in the headlights. Like I have three fucking heads. And instead of calling 911, they're asking me if I'm okay because like I got stabbed in the fucking arm. You know, blood is pouring all over me. So that's when I'm like, y'all are fucking dumb. I snatched some random lady's phone. I call 911 myself. And of course they don't arrive until like 30 minutes after. Well, thankfully Taylor and Garrett pulled up at the same exact time as they did. So I hurry up, I point to Garrett and Taylor's car. Fast forward, they end up getting arrested, blah, 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 blah. And then Taylor and Garrett's parents came. Apparently I had more than just a stab wound. I didn't notice that, but it was bad enough for me to go to the hospital. I guess my adrenaline was just really high and I didn't fucking notice. But eventually I did end up speaking to Garrett's parents and they had told me that he hasn't been well mentally for a while. Prior to this, he had been spending a lot of time in his room alone. Also, he kept telling them that he never wanted to see me again because I was a lying, cheating slut. Apparently Taylor had told Garrett that I slept with his best friend and I took that week off because I found out that I was pregnant with his best friend's baby and I needed to figure out how I was gonna break up with him. But that's not the only thing. Garrett was even more of a creep than I thought. Garrett was even more of a weirdo than I had originally thought. He had naked pictures of me and my parents. And he also somehow got pictures of my dead brother. Yeah, my brother who died seven years before this in a car accident. Well, anyways, fast forward. I'm now a freshman in college. Taylor is thankfully in jail where she fucking belongs. Garrett thankfully ended up being sent to a mental facility. In the end, I think that's what's best for him because that kid was just mentally fucked. Not only for being tricked into almost killing his girlfriend slash ex-girlfriend, AKA me, but apparently during his and Taylor's relationship, she would force him to do some pretty messed up shit. Like the whole brains behind this was her and she, knew that Garrett wasn't in a right place and she, yeah. 
pretty much. But Gary's parents are actually really sweet people, so I actually am really close with them. And Taylor wasn't the only fucked up one in her family. Remember how I told y'all that I'm not surprised that her dad did that to Lisa's dad? That's why. They're all fucked up. Like, Taylor's mom is even in jail for sexually assaulting Taylor's stepbrother. Y'all, when I hear about some of the shit that you guys go through, it absolutely breaks my heart. Like, I am so sorry to anybody who's going through a hard time, especially at home, because that is the hardest abuse to escape from. And I would like to mention in here, for all of you who have sent in story times about abuse that you've suffered, whether it be emotional, sexual, any type of abuse in general, I've read your stories, I see them, I want you guys to know that you are heard, and some of them I majority of those i can't post on here and i know that sometimes it's just nice to get it out so that way you feel like you're not holding it all inside so you know my dms are always open if you guys need to talk and another thing this story is seriously just another reason why you have to look out for yourself people are fucking crazy the world that we live in today is absolutely horrendous and you always have to be an advocate for yourself. Like if something doesn't feel right, if you have a gut feeling that something is not right or something bad is going to happen to you, trust your instincts. I don't care if you were wrong, so what? You thought something bad was gonna happen at that party and it didn't, but you know what? What if it did? I know it seems like I'm being overdramatic, but just watch out for yourself, protect yourself. And yeah, please. Okay, everybody, that is the end of today's story time. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, maybe hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to know whenever I post my next video, make sure to click that bell. And for those of you who want to send in an anonymous story time or you want to know how to send in an anonymous story time, make sure to click the links down below in the description. But other than that, I will see you guys next Saturday with a new story time.